Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live stream Sunday worship from the United Benefice of St. James and St. Stephen's in Blackburn. And, and a real warm welcome to you, wherever you're joining me from today. Um, I just need to put something right at the beginning of this service. I'm just getting a little bit of um I'm just getting a bit of feedback from this, so I just need to I think I need to close the Facebook page down or minimize it. And I hope it doesn't end the live video. Okay then. Um, can I just pause at this point, please? Because I've got a bit of a problem with my audio. I'm getting quite a lot of feedback. So I'm just going to have to come back and join you in a minute. Just bear with me, please. Oh, hello again. I'm really sorry about that. It was just the video was playing back to me on a delay and the I, I don't know whether you could hear it too. So um, let's start again with another warm welcome to wherever you're joining us from today. Um, I just want to I just want to put something right at the beginning of the service. I'm just going to put it back because we're still okay we're sorted now thank you very much to my able technical assistant Adam <laughs> just wanted to put something right at the beginning of the service that I've realized over these past few weeks I've never introduced myself and um, many of you know me but some of you may not my name's Reverend Joanne and I'm an assistant priest in the United Benefice and it's my pleasure to lead worship on these Sundays um, along with Reverend Sarah so a very warm welcome to you all. Um, thanks to Adam who's just sorted out my audio problem and we're good to go now so um, let's just take a moment to pause especially for me as I've had distractions at the beginning of this service so um, let's just pause and take a moment as we come into the presence of the living God who is always with us. Heavenly Father, we draw into your presence so we, we gather from all our various places for worship this morning. And a verse from our gospel reading. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. So we begin our worship now with our opening hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. 
I'm very sorry you didn't get the third and fourth verses for the words of that hymn. Um, what always works really well when I'm running through this sometimes just doesn't work on the day. So I'm very sorry about that. But if you're unable to join in those words, I hope you just let them washed over you this morning. A hymn of great peace and God's assurance that is with us in the storms of life.
and at the beginning of our service, we turn back to God now, recognising that we haven't always lived his way, in the words of our confession. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ, So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And having received God's forgiveness and being given a fresh start, we can praise him together in the words of the Gloria. We say together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We turn now to our collect, the special prayer for today, which was on the service sheet circulated previously or on the monthly reading sheets. If you don't have it before you, just listen to the words. But if you do, join with me as we pray together. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to turn now to our scripture readings. And Irene is going to read our psalm for us today. Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people, and to the fit they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give, a, give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and direct his steps in the way. Hear him son. And we're going to have our epistle reading now, which Joan is going to read to us. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you to Joan and Irene for our readings. We're going to turn now to our gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord is good news announced to you. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Before I share a few thoughts with you on that Gospel reading, we're going to continue listening from one of our members about their experience of lockdown. And this week, we're going to hear from Val. Good morning, my name is Val Edge and I worship at St James's Church. During lockdown, this has been a very difficult time for us all. But the three things that I want to share with you during my experience of being in lockdown is my faith, my family, my friends and my fitness. My faith has been uppermost during lockdown where I've been able via YouTube to join in the services from St James's on a Wednesday and a Sunday morning. Also I have been able to through a Zoom join in evening prayer which has been uh, streamed out from the cathedral every evening from 5 to 5.30 and that has kept me in a routine of the day. It's been beneficial because I've been able to worship with a small group of people from my own home and that has guided me through the days when I've had ups and downs. Secondly, my family and my friends. I have my friends 
who are wonderful neighbours and friends living in the community who, like me, live on their own. But we, during that time, have kept in co close contact either through phone calls or FaceTime or Zoom and that's been very important to keep the communication and to keep me, my spirits going. My family uh, live away but saying that it's been really good to be able to share with them my daily experiences. Third of all, my fitness. I have been teaching Keep Fit and Exercise Studies now for over 50 years and continue to do so. But as we all know, during lockdown, it's been a very difficult time because we've not been able to leave our homes. So during that time, I've been very fortunate for a company called Learning with Experts who have actually supported me for me to record my Keep Fit lessons from my home. And then they've been sent out via the website so my Keep Fit ladies and anybody can do the exercises in their living room as I have done them in my living room. I would like to actually share with you the opportunity of actually having a strong faith during lockdown and during my life I have had many ups and downs but the one thing I want to say is that God guides us through every day. My daily routine and my daily pattern of prayer, worship and continuing to keep strong, focused and determined during lockdown has made me very, 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 very fortunate to have the home, the family, and most of all, the faith to guide me through these very challenging and unsettled times we are living in. God bless you all. Well, thank you there to Val for sharing her experience. And I don't know about you, but um, over these last weeks, I've been really touched and encouraged by people's openness and honesty in sharing their experience of lockdown. It will be very different uh, for each one of you, but I am very grateful for those people for being willing to share that. We're just going to turn now to uh, our readings for the day, and I'm just going to share a few thoughts with you. So let's just pray. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Well, I wonder what you make of our Gospel reading today, that, um, that perhaps well-known passage to some of you of where Jesus walks on water. But I just want to share a few thoughts with you about that today. Um, we're told that this immediately follows on from the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus sends the disciples on ahead to the other side of the lake. There's a clear intention that there's work to be done in another place, so they must go on ahead. Um, and meanwhile, he wants to take some time up the mountain to pray, perhaps to uh, be close to his father and recharge himself for the work that's ahead. Because this passage uh, might be so familiar to many of you, we might have our own ideas in our heads of what it means. And one of the interpretations that's often to give it, given to the passage focuses on Peter and his faith. As he gets out of the boat and tries to walk across the water, he flounders when he takes his eyes off Jesus and aware of the surroundings, he begins to sink. And often there's a simple moral that is drawn for that. If you kept your eyes fixed on Jesus, then you wouldn't sink. And so if our faith is strong, totally focused on Jesus, then we won't sink in the storms of life. And that's true, isn't it? We do need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and not get distracted by what's going on around us. But perhaps there's more to this story than just that. The first thing I want to say is that Jesus comes to the disciples in their struggles. They've been trying to get to shore on the other side. 
but their progress is impeded by the wind. It keeps battering them and we're told that they are still far from shore in the morning. But Jesus comes to them. In some way, perhaps because, he's, because he is beyond our humanity, he knows that they are in trouble and he comes to them walking on the water. With those very famous words that perhaps some of us need to hear today. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. He comes to them in the midst of their struggle and bees and is with them. <clears throat> but I want to just turn back to looking at Peter as well. Jesus is very clear because the disciples are terrified. Who is this walking across the water? It's easy to chide the disciples, but do you know what? If I was on a boat uh, and I've been struggling all night to make progress and somebody came walking across the water, I think I might be terrified too, wondering what on earth was this that I was seeing? because it's outside our human experience to see somebody walking on water. We can't do it. Human beings don't walk on water. So they were terrified. But Jesus seeks to assure them straight away, take heart, be of courage, do not be afraid. It is I. But Peter doubts. And to keep using the word, we have no doubt that he was doubting because Jesus rebukes him. Why did you doubt? If it is you, Lord, command me to come and walk across the water to you. Well, come, says Jesus. And he gets out of the boat and we know what we know what happens. Peter initially can walk on the water, but then he begins to flounder. But he cries out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And with his hand. Jesus immediately rescues him. But then he chastised him. You of little faith, why did you doubt? We don't really know what Peter was doubting. Was he doubting that he could walk on water? Or was he doubting that it was Jesus? He expressed that in his own words. If it is you, Lord, command me to come out of the water. Was he putting Jesus to the test? And did he not believe Jesus' words when he said to him, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Well, as with Thomas, who is the one who we often attribute the title the doubter, Jesus deals with Peter's doubts. He puts out a hand to save him and they get back in the boat and the wind ceases. You may recall another miracle of a, when Jesus is in a boat with his disciples that you can read earlier in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, when Jesus calms a storm. When Jesus has calmed the storm, the disciples turn to one another and say, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Surely in our midst we have somebody pretty extraordinary. Well, they weren't sure then what the answer was, but this time when Jesus gets back in the boat with Peter, the disciples are sure who this is. Truly, this is the Son of God. Their understanding of Jesus has moved on from wondering who he is to knowing who he is. And I wonder where we are in our life's journey, wondering about Jesus, who he is. We might have not much idea who Jesus is. We might have a few ideas of a few stories we might have heard, but who is he? Or you might have been walking with Jesus for a long time in your life and know that he is truly the Son of God. A title that doesn't distinguish that is actually a baby of where Jesus is his human father, where God is his human father, but he is of God himself. He is God in person, God in the midst of us. 
more than just a good man, a good teacher, a miracle worker, but really God among us. And as a disciples journey on, so do we. And we can ask ourselves that same question. Who is this Jesus in the boat with us? And I want to think about that boat just a little bit too. Because when Jesus got in that boat, calm was restored. And presumably they made progress. The Gospels go on to tell us that Jesus went over, they went over to the other side and the ministry continued with the disciples with him. The boat, or the ship, is a symbol that's often used in Christianity of God's people and Jesus is in the boat with us. Indeed, in our church buildings, we gather together in the area called the nave. And the nave is the same word in Latin as ship. They come from the same source, much like the word for navy. It's a place where God's people are. And if you look up the ceiling, up at the ceiling of many churches, they look like boats turned upside down. It's a deliberate design feature. We're in the boats together. And at this time of Corona lockdown, many of us can't come into the church buildings we love. And we often see it as a place of refuge and sanctity. But we have to remember that Jesus was in the boat with his disciples with a clear intention to get to the other side, to carry on the ministry, to get out of the boat and to go on to the land. Not for them to all walk on water, we must leave that to the divine power of Jesus, but to carry on his ministry, to preach and teach and heal and restore people to community, to bring God's good news of love to all people. We can't stay in the boat, much as we'd want to be in the place of refuge and sanctity. There's work to be done. There are lands to be walked. There are risks to be taken. There are people to be told about the good news of Jesus. Because, as Joan read in our epistle, how are they to believe if they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim? There is work to be done, which requires us to get out of the boat and walk with Jesus. So just to sum up my reflection, we can take heart and we can take courage because Jesus himself comes to us in the storms of life. We need not doubt who he is. We don't need to try and emulate him by walking on the water. But we do need to get out of the boat with him, onto the land and share Jesus with those we meet who haven't heard. Amen. And so we come now to a time of affirming our faith. We join together in the words of the Creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to turn now to our time of prayer and John is going to lead us. Let us pray. As we remember our Gospel reading about the storm on the lake, we ask that you come in the storm of life that we come to you being aware of our weaknesses and that we may be made strong through the power of your love. 
Amen. When we're in situations of danger, concern or unease, when troubles happen, let us hear you say, take heart in the words, do not be afraid. We pray for the world and in particular situations in Lebanon and the surge of immigrants crossing the channel. Let us be sympathetic to their needs and be grateful for what we have and share our wealth with the needy of the world. For our country and all affected by COVID-19, we pray for all who are feeling down, fearful and weary. We pray for the world and the people unable to help themselves. We pray for all the carers, helpers, doctors and people at this time who are seeking to help others. Finally, in a moment of quiet, let us reflect on the needs of ourselves, our friends and family and quietly petition them to the Lord now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayers. Amen. Thank you to John for leading us in prayer. And we come to, now to the time of sharing our peace. A verse from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord shall keep in perfect peace the minds that are fixed on him. And so this day may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And from the virtual places where we are, we share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. It's going to now prepare the table as we move towards our time of Holy Communion. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you love the world and your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with angels and saints, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, as we obey his command. Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. 
on the night before he died. He had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint James and Saint Stephen's and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we join in now with the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us, in whichever version or language you prefer. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And as I break the bread, we will say the prayer together. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And although we can't partake physically, we join together spiritually and we say the prayer of spiritual communion together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We take a few moments now in quiet reflection as I play some music, 
that Jesus has come into our lives and nourished us and refreshed us. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. We turn to our prayer after communion. <clears throat> Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, just before we move to our final hymn, um, I've just got a few notices to to read out for you. You're very welcome to join with us in our coffee and chat at half past 11 after this service, which is hosted via Zoom. So uh, do join us if you can. If you want the details of how to join, just message us on our Facebook page and we'll we'll let you know how to do that. Our next service that uh, will be live streamed will be Wednesday midweek worship on the Facebook page, which will be led by Reverend Sarah at 10 o'clock. So do join if you can. Um, and to let you know that throughout August, our two church buildings at St. Stephen's at Little Harwood and St. James in Blackburn are open for private prayer between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. So do pop in if you are able and feel safe to do so during those times. Um, just to make the uh, the opportunity available to you all. And we'll keep you posted as we intend to open the church buildings for Sunday worship from the beginning of September. If you've had uh, a special occasion this week, I know there have been one or two birthdays or an anniversary or some other celebration, we join with you and send you our love and our blessings for that.
Well, we're just going to move now to our final hymn, uh, which is We Are Marching in the Light of Christ. That reminds us that on the land we march with Jesus with us to go through this land to share the joy of uh, in his work. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. I love that hymn because it just reminds us that ours is a dynamic and moving faith. It's not something static or stationary. So as we move on from this place, it's my joy and privilege just to share a final blessing with you. May the peace and joy and hope and love of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining me this day and may the rest of your day be blessed. I'm sorry about the glitches at the beginning of the service, but uh, that's the joy of live streaming. So thank you for sharing with me today. God bless. <laughs>